Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, if you spend any time on a crypto forum, it won't be long until you hear a crypto veteran telling new people to the space that, hey, if you store crypto on your exchanges, and if they're not your keys, they're not your coins. And equally, there is a, a guy in Newport in Wales still wandering around a rubbish dump looking for his lost keys, which are said to be worth around £300 million in Bitcoin. I think he even offered the local council £50 million if they were successful in helping him retrieve them. Can you imagine being in that position? So with so many big talking points around crypto, where's the best place to store them? What's safe? What isn't? I invited Nick Newman from Casa onto the podcast today, and we're going to discuss the different Bitcoin safety solutions on the market that holders should and need to be aware of, why you might want to be considering taking your coins off exchanges altogether, and why a wallet alone might not be enough. We've got a lot to get through today, so buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Denver, Colorado, where Nick Newman from Casa is waiting to speak with us now. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Nick. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm I'm excited to be here. So I'm Nick. I'm the CEO at Casa, and Casa is the safest way to store your Bitcoin. We're making it incredibly simple and safe for people to secure Bitcoin because we believe that it's the best form of money in the world. Well, a question I've got to begin with is, what's your origin story? Where did your passion for crypto and technology, et cetera, where did that all come from and and put you on this path? You weren't one of the guys that bought the the pizza for many Bitcoins all those years ago, were you? No, I wasn't. (laughs) Uh, Unfortunately, like I would have loved to be that guy because he's still got plenty of Bitcoin left, I'm sure. But no, I actually didn't get into the Bitcoin and crypto industry really until early 2017. But my passion for tech goes all the way back to when I was a kid who played too many video games and just loved computers and technology and always wanted to grow up and be a video game designer or developer and didn't end up taking that path, but I ended up actually going into finance and decided that while it was really interesting to learn how businesses run and everything that you do learn through working in finance, I didn't like the fact that I was just kind of working for somebody else to make decisions. And so I made the move into startup world and eventually fell down the crypto rabbit hole and really got interested in the fact that Bitcoin provides this opportunity for people to once again actually own their own money and have control over their money, their savings, and really the things that are matter the most to them in the digital world. And so that was what brought me to Casa. And that's how we've really, or what, what the driving force is behind what we are building today. Wow. So I would imagine that right now, news that video games are converging with crypto in the metaverse, et cetera, that's got to be incredibly cool for you too, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. I mean, you're starting to see native digital money in the form of cryptocurrency actually merge in a way with the video gaming world, which makes total sense because video games have been digital forever. And it's you're starting to see some of these concepts that have been really around in the video game world for a long time, like scarcity and like digital gold. You can look back at like World of Warcraft gold, for example. And these things are just now with Bitcoin, they're starting to be applied to the rest of the world. And so you're able to have that, maybe one day you'll be able to have that digital currency in game, but then you're also able to use, that's your Bitcoin in game as the currency of the game, but you're also able to take it outside the game and use it elsewhere. And so 
there's some really interesting overlap there. And as the world just becomes more and more digital, this Bitcoin is the perfect currency to support that. And that path that you've been on, that led you to Casa, which does have a reputation for being a safe way to store your Bitcoin. But for people listening that may be in or outside of this industry or, or maybe new to this space, can you go into a little bit more detail on what Casa is and, and what makes you different from all those other solutions out there? Sure. So in order to understand this, the first thing that you really need to know is that Bitcoin acts much more like cash than it does like a credit card, mm -hmm. which you would think of as this more natively digital form of money. So with a credit card, if somebody steals your credit card or you lose it, you just call the bank and you say, hey, put that money back in my account or send me a new credit card and it's fine. But with Bitcoin, it acts a lot more like cash in that you actually, if you lose it or if somebody steals it from you, there's no reversing that transaction. It's just gone. And so because Bitcoin transactions can't be reversed, you have to think much more carefully about how you are storing and securing that Bitcoin. So you can think of the, the options for Bitcoin security like a spectrum. On the one hand, on the one end, you've got exchanges like this is like Coinbase or Kraken. And on these exchanges, you don't actually hold the keys to your Bitcoin. And the keys are what unlock your Bitcoin and allow you to spend it. So Coinbase, for example, holds those keys for you. And while you don't have to necessarily worry about Coinbase losing those keys because they have a bunch of systems to make sure they don't do that, what you do have to worry more about is that if somebody gets access to your account, like a hacker, and they decide to steal the Bitcoin out of it, there's really nothing Coinbase can do or you can do to get that money back. There's no calling your bank and saying, hey, put this money back in my account. It's gone. So that's the risk when you hold your keys and your Bitcoin on an exchange. On the other end of the spectrum, there's wallets. And these are like hardware wallets. So maybe you've seen a Ledger or a Trezor hardware wallet. And with these, you really don't have as much of that risk of theft because it's really hard for somebody to get access to a physical hardware wallet or even just a mobile wallet that's on your phone and where the keys are stored locally on your phone. But on the flip side, the, the problem becomes you are the sole person responsible for storing the key in that scenario. So if you lose that little hardware device, or if you lose your password to your wallet, you could lose all your money. It's the equivalent of accidentally dropping a $20 bill on the street and not knowing where you dropped it. You can't go back and find that. And so... That comes with this extra layer of responsibility and anxiety that causes a lot of people to say, I'd rather take the risk of theft and leave this with Coinbase than have the potential of making a mistake and losing all of my money. So at Casa, we really look at this problem and say, look at these two solutions on this end of the either end of the spectrum here that this doesn't work for mass adoption of Bitcoin. We need people to be comfortable holding their own keys and not have to worry about being perfect and not have to worry about a single mistake, meaning they've lost all their money. And so what we've done is we've built a product that makes it really simple to hold your own keys while significantly reducing that risk of loss to where it's basically zero. And so the way that we accomplish this is that you have multiple keys protecting your Bitcoin. And you don't necessarily need all of those keys to actually access it. So that means you can be a human. You can lose one key and you don't lose all of your money. And that's the really important part of this. We take away the anxiety of holding your own keys because you don't have that risk of making a mistake and losing everything that you've, you've worked hard to save. 
and there are so many uh, horror stories out there. There's one in particular, I shouldn't laugh, but there was a, a guy in Wales over here in the UK, and I, I seem to remember he, he lost something like 200 million in Bitcoin. And uh, it was actually, yeah, I think thrown that, is that the guy who has it, in, he's like been searching through the, uh, the trash dumps for a really yes. long time. And yeah. he, he even offered to pay the council, fifth, anyone at the council, 50 million if they would yep. find it. I mean, wow. <laughs> but there's so many tales like that out there, isn't there? But right. So, so so what are the main safety solutions on the market? Is it like you said, you've got the Trent, uh, the, the Ledger, and the various other solutions out there? Yeah. So you like when you break it down, it, it's what I was saying. But in broad strokes, you've got yeah. custodians who hold your keys for you and wallets where you hold your own keys. And the problem with custodians is that since Bitcoin transactions are irreversible, they just the custodian model doesn't scale because the user's actual account becomes the point of weakness. And so if somebody's able to get their access to your username and password and log in to your account at a custodian like an exchange, they can just send that Bitcoin out. Whereas if they were to get your username and password with a wallet, they usually aren't able to get access to your Bitcoin because the key, even if it's a mobile wallet on your phone that you're logging into, the key is still stored on your phone itself. So they would need access to that physical device. However, then when you look at the wallet side, you get back into that risk of loss perspective. And so that's where you have to make sure that you've stored your key well or that you're using a solution like Casa that makes it so you don't have to protect that single key at all costs. And so these are some of the trade-offs that people have to think through and, and make as they're storing their Bitcoin. And there's a lot of different solutions out there on, on both ends, right? There's many different things that you can pick from. And that that choice actually makes it somewhat difficult for the average person, right? Because they're thinking, how do I know that the wallet that I'm choosing is actually safe? They're doing a, a good job writing code that properly protects my Bitcoin keys. And the average person doesn't know what to look for when they're doing this research. And maybe they don't even have that much time to do research. And so that's why at CASA, we're really trying to build a very approachable product and brand and set of educational content that people know they can just come to CASA and trust that we are we have done the work for them. And we've really made this simple for them so that they don't have to think through all of these different trade-offs and decisions. They get the benefits of having of holding their own keys and of having that real control and security over an incredibly important asset like Bitcoin, but they don't have to spend all of the time to figure out how to do everything pers- personally. And I suspect if we were to take everyone that's listening to this podcast all over the world, I would imagine that they're going to fit into one of two camps. On one side, they're going to be, I don't want to take my coins off an exchange because I could mess things up and I trust the exchange more than myself. And on the other side, people will, will say that infamous line that if, uh, if they're on an exchange, they are not your coins. So can you settle that argument once and for all? I, I, I expect obviously you're going to be biased because you've got a solution that fits both sides. But what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, unequivocally, if your Bitcoin is on an exchange, it's not your keys, not your coins. Yeah. And Casa fully believes that. And Bitcoin held on an exchange is an IOU. Yeah. It is a promise from the exchange that they will move your Bitcoin when you ask them to, that they will protect your Bitcoin with the best to the best standards, which is sometimes the case. Some of the more reputable ones, I think, do a good job of that. Others do not. And we've seen other instances, even as recently as the last couple of weeks, where smaller exchanges have been hacked for hundreds of millions of dollars and customers lose their funds. And so when you keep your Bitcoin on an exchange, you are explicitly taking that risk from the theft and security side of things. And that Bitcoin is only an IOU. And so that's why we're really trying to make it, CASA is fully on board with not your keys, not your coins. And we are just trying to 
enable people to hold their own keys in a way that they don't have to actually worry about that potential loss or theft. We've thought of those hard things for them and just built all of the best security practices into the product. So all you got to do is use the product and follow the instructions with it that are actually in the app as it walks you through everything. And it's really simple and safe for you know anybody to use. And like you said a few moments ago, one of the problems with other wallets is if you could lose it, you could forget your password. There's so many things that can go wrong. What safety measures do you have in place just to make sure people don't make uh, those kind of mistakes or get into trouble? And equally, if you guys were hacked, what kind of safety measures have you got just to put people at ease before moving their Bitcoin over to Casa? Yeah, so uh, on the first question, the, the main difference between Casa and other wallets is that Casa has multiple keys protecting your Bitcoin. So at our one of our lower kind of tiers, our basic tier, as an example, instead of just having that one key on your phone that protects your Bitcoin, you've actually got three keys and you only need two of them to spend funds. So with a normal wallet, you've got one key, you need that one key to spend your Bitcoin. With a Casa wallet, you've got three and you need two to spend. So one of those keys is on your phone within the app. It's very simple to use there. Another key is on a hardware wallet, like a, a Ledger wallet or a Trezor. And so if you're already using one of those, it, it's a no brainer to increase your security by integrating it with Casa. And then the third key is held by Casa. And so Casa never has the ability to actually move funds by ourselves because we only hold one key out of that set of three. But let's say you lose that hardware wallet or you lose your phone. We can actually use the Casa key to help you still access your Bitcoin in conjunction with that other key that you still have possession of. And so this just gives people a significantly higher level of resiliency in their Bitcoin security. And that's the big difference from a technology perspective between Casa and other wallets. But then we take that one step further and add in a, a layer of support and service that you just cannot get anywhere else. And so a lot of wallets out there, because they are free, they don't have great customer support. You're going to a community forum and asking for help from other people and hoping that somebody helps you, or you're waiting for weeks at a time to hear back from the customer support team. On the CASA side of things, we really believe that having somebody who's there to be your Bitcoin security advisor, to help you actually think through the security side of things, answer any questions very quickly, with something that is really important. You're, protect, you're potentially protecting a significant portion of your personal life savings in Bitcoin. And so having somebody there who's getting back to you very quickly with questions, or even at our higher uh, membership tiers, we're getting on video calls with people to walk them through setting up the product and making sure that they feel comfortable from a security perspective. These are things that really nobody else in the industry offers. And we just think it's so important to actually help people to feel comfortable holding their own keys and, and feel comfortable shifting into this new world of Bitcoin. So then to answer your second question, which was about what happens if Casa gets hacked, this is one of the great things about Casa being a product where our users hold their own keys. So because our users hold their keys and Casa doesn't actually have the ability to move funds for them. If somebody hacks CASA, they get nothing. Maybe they get some customer information, like an email address that somebody's logging in with, but they're not going to get access to the Bitcoin. And so that makes that's part of what makes CASA such a safe solution. Somebody needs to actually physically access a CASA user's phone and hardware wallets in order to ever get access to their Bitcoin. And so that just provides that additional layer of, of security and certainty for our users. 
I love that. I'm just trying to visualise it now. It reminded me a lot of the, the old war movies where before anyone made the missile attack or something like that, there was a, a long chain with a key at either end and, and people in different levels of command had to use it to, to unlock the access there. So I love what you're doing. Yeah, that's a, that's a great metaphor. Another there's The nuclear codes yeah. where you need the two keys. And then another one could be, another metaphor is like when you go into the bank and you're accessing a safety deposit box and and you've got a key and the banker has a key and you both need to put them in and turn them at the same time in order to open your safety deposit box. That's another yeah. great example of a real life kind of non-Bitcoin metaphor for this. Love that. And is it just Bitcoin that you store or is it other coins as well? Yeah, it's just Bitcoin. And the reason for that is that we're a small team and when we're... Uh, building a security product, we really want to make sure that we are building a rock solid product that has no security holes, right? Because you make one mistake on the security side and your business is done. And so as a small team, we said, we're going to pick an area to really focus on and Bitcoin is going to be that area of focus because we know that Bitcoin is the best form of money out of all the the cryptocurrencies that are out there today. And it's also the largest market. And so we can help the most people by focusing on Bitcoin. And so that's really the the impetus behind our decision to, to be focused on Bitcoin today. And what is it that excites you about the future of the industry in, in 2022? Because there's a lot of big changes going on. The The industry seems to move at breakneck speed. But what is it in particular that excites you? Is it the metaverse or or something completely different? Well, I think the, the metaverse is obviously exciting. I think a lot of people are excited about it right now. And it's something that is kind of the buzzword of the yeah. day. And we'll see. I think it's going to take a little bit more time than people think to really build up into what people are imagining. But I am really excited about it just coming from my background as a kid. But what I'm really excited about for this next year is that I think we're going to... So the last couple of years, we've seen this narrative around Bitcoin as digital gold and as a store of value really... Be, become the prevalent narrative. And I think that's really accurate and very exciting as a use case of Bitcoin, especially as we're seeing the inflation effects that are going on around the world. It's just an important safe haven for people in terms of protecting their savings. However, one of the things that I think we'll start to see going into this next year is, is shifting from Bitcoin as purely this asset to invest in and have sit in cold storage where which means a high kind of like a highly secure vault having it will shift from just having bitcoin be this asset that you invest in and have it sit there to bitcoin being an asset that you can use so we're going from this holding to using uh type of theme i would say for the year we're starting to see more activity using Bitcoin as a payment rail, either for transferring other currencies like dollars internationally, or for actually just spending Bitcoin for smaller sized purchases than are typically economical on the Bitcoin chain today. And that's using a, a, a layer two technology that sits on top of Bitcoin called the Lightning Network. And then we're also seeing people start to use Bitcoin more for uh, other types of financial transactions. So they're using their Bitcoin as collateral to borrow dollars against, and then they can use those dollars to go and invest in something in their life that's that they need to invest in. So maybe they need to get a new car, maybe they're getting a new house. They have seen their Bitcoin investment appreciate quite a bit, but they don't want to sell their Bitcoin. Well, there's solutions out there that let you borrow against that Bitcoin without selling it. And similarly to how you would borrow against a house, for example, you can get cash that you can use in your daily life. And then we're also seeing people do things like lend out their Bitcoin to generate a yield. And so they're actually earning interest on their Bitcoin. And so these are things that we are just seeing happen more and more. And I think that people as a whole, we will see over the next year or two, 
the Bitcoin industry shift towards much more actively using Bitcoin, where you're deciding, okay, some portion of this is staying in my super secure savings account. Another portion of this I'm I'm borrowing against, or I'm earning yield on, or I'm using it to spend, to listen to podcasts that I'm paying the podcaster in Bitcoin or any number of ways that you can spend your Bitcoin with micropayments, that kind of thing. And so that's the trend that we're starting to see and that I'm excited about because it's fulfilling that promise of Bitcoin, not just as a store of value, but as a native digital currency. And what about you guys at Casa? What's next for you? Is there anything you can reveal about what you're going to be focusing on this year? Well, I think what you what I was just talking about gives you kind of a hint yeah. as to what we're thinking about, right? Because today, Casa is really on that side of just how do you store your Bitcoin as securely as possible? And it doesn't really move that much, but you've got it securely there. Your investment and your savings are secure. That's the core foundation of the CASA product and will continue to be the foundation and the unique advantage of CASA as a product compared to all the others, like I explained earlier. But our users are are starting to want to do more things with their Bitcoin. They're wanting to participate in some of those financial services like borrowing and lending. They're wanting to utilize the Lightning Network for making payments. And so you'll start to see Casa grow from being just the most secure place to store your Bitcoin to a highly secure platform for accessing the broader Bitcoin and financial ecosystem. And that's something that is really exciting for us at Casa because it represents a a really large growth and expansion and shift in how we approach building our product, but it's also really exciting for our customers because these are things that people have been asking us for the last year or so. And and really, we've been working with our customers to figure out what the best solutions are and what the problems are to solve in these different areas of Bitcoin. And so, you know, you'll really see Casa driving that shift. And we've almost come full circle now. We began the podcast talking about your origin story, where your passion for tech came from. But I'm now going to have a bit of fun with you before I let you walk off. And that is asking, what was the soundtrack to your origin story? Is there a song or piece of music that just helps you get your head in the zone or has just inspired you throughout your career? If you've got a song and story to share with us, we'll, we'll add that song to our Spotify playlist. Yeah, this is a great question. And my answer is kind of a goofy one, honestly, <laughs> but... I've always, so to get my head in the zone, if I'm going to go give a talk or something like that, whenever I, growing up, there's always those scenes in movies where there's a group of people who are the, they're the badass group of heroes in whatever movie it is. And they're kind of walking out around a corner in slow motion and there's some soundtrack playing in the background. And I've always thought the best song for this is Superstition by Stevie Wonder. And if I could just have this playing in the background magically somehow when I walk into a room when I need a little bit of extra confidence and a little pump-up support, I would. So that's the song that I pick as my soundtrack for my life. Wow, what a great bass line there as well, man. And does that include chucking a Zippo over your shoulder or or, or a few ducks into the sky? (laughs) Yeah, maybe like chucking a Zippo over my shoulder or potentially putting on some sunglasses in slow motion, something like that. Maybe I've got a leather jacket on and the wind's blowing it out to the side a little bit. I love that. Well, before I let you go, for anyone listening wanting to find out more information about CASA, join your community, contact your team. What's the best starting point? Yeah, so our website is keys.casa. That's K-E-Y-S dot C-A-S-A. And then you can also find us on Twitter at Casa Hodl. So that's at C-A-S-A-H-O-D-L. And then finally, my personal Twitter is at N Newman's, N-E-U-M-A-N. And so all of those are great places to follow along with 
what costs it's building. If you have questions about the product, you can actually go to our website and sign up for a call with our team. We'll get on a call with you and tell you all about it and help you understand what you need for your own Bitcoin security needs. And we just, that's what we love doing every day. So please reach out, come find us and learn more about how to hold your own keys safely. Well, so much I've loved about chatting with you today, especially why everyone should start taking their coins off exchanges altogether, why a wallet alone might not be enough, especially if you ask that guy in Newport in Wales who's still searching that rubbish dump. But more than anything for sharing your very personal story and what put you on this path and a great baseline to finish with as well. So thanks for joining (laughs) me today, Nick. Thanks, Neil. It was great to talk to you. So a big thank you to Nick for sharing how, in his view, despite sovereignty being the biggest issue in the Bitcoin space, it's ultimately one that's being addressed the least. And it's not a technology problem or a process problem, but rather than the big challenge is how we can make security technology standards in an industry with an overall poor track record of keeping its customers' coins safe. There are so many stories of people losing their coins In fact, I would suspect that everybody listening knows somebody who knows somebody that has lost some coins. But I suppose it's a little bit like deleting a uh, Word doc or a, a huge spreadsheet. It's something you only do once and then you learn from it. But over to you, if you've got any stories or experiences you'd like to share or any viewpoints... Uh, based on our conversation today i invite you all to message me you can uh, email me techblogwriter at outlook.com linkedin twitter instagram at neil c hughes and my website is techblogwriter.co.uk but that's it for today i'll return again tomorrow with another tech story and a completely different topic so a big thank you for listening as always and until next time don't be a stranger Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.